the way that we do. Now let's go back to Mudaiga Golf Club. I know there is a lot that is expected actually uh, there. But Abula, I know you're standing by by one man who might be at a very, very positive position to tell us why are, are Kenyans actually having that uh, dismal performance? Why are only why did we only have uh, two Kenyans actually making that uh, cut? And again, that money will not come the Kenyan way as things look a very, very nightmarish performance from the Kenyans. That's actually one of the things that I expect you, Abula, actually to now be at that uh, position to uh, clarify for us. Moses, it is getting hotter here at uh, Mudaiga Golf Club. Remember, we are where we are standing. It's at uh, hole 13, and uh, we have like uh, four holes remaining uh, to know who is going to be the winner, who is going to be the champion, and who is going to walk away with 10 million Kenya shillings. The winner of 2018 Kenya Golf Open uh, Tournament or Championship. And uh, we've talked a lot about uh, how Kenyans have performed in this uh, tournament since uh, day one. That was on, uh, uh, let's say, on Wednesday or even on Thursday till now and uh, it hasn't been that good as far as Kenya's pro golfers is concerned and uh, I'm joined by one of the top men or oh, the guys who are in charge of golf in the country I'm joined by none other than uh, Mr. Richard Wanjala who is the chairman of Kenya Golf Union. Tell us more about uh, his expectations before the tournament and uh, what uh, can he say about the tournament and uh, the performance of uh, Kenya's pro golfers. Welcome to Kenya uh, School line uh, Mr. Wanjala how are you first I'm okay thank you very much uh, for having me on this uh, show the Kenya Golf Union and the professional golfers uh, of Kenya had very very high expectations this year more particularly since the government put in a million shillings to increase the price money from uh, uh, the 39 million shillings it was to 62.5 million shillings this year and we had high hopes that our own professionals would take a big slice of that cake. But unfortunately, the performance was not uh, as we expected. Uh, they didn't actually make the cut. Only two of them made the cut. Um, and those are the ones that we are really hanging on now. Uh, what can you say the reason was? Uh, I think that the reason is um, the few that we have talked to, they think that they didn't have enough practice. And they also think that um, they really had more or less... Uh, uh, they were mesmerized by the performance of the uh, superior teams from uh, Europe and that really broke their nerves and uh, for some reason I think quite a number of them collapsed in the process because uh, we had a few who made uh, over 10 strokes over par which was not the expectation. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, more than 20 Kenyans uh, pro golfers but only two made it uh, to, uh, to the cut and uh, uh, tell us about uh, their performances, maybe tell us more about the guys who did not make it. Uh, the guys who didn't make it, as I can um, uh, share with you, uh, we're going to really sit down and have a conversation with them so that we hear firsthand from them themselves uh, as to exactly what happened. But we only comment on what we observed. We think they could have done better. And uh, going forward, we are not losing hope. We, as soon as we finish with this uh, particular competition, we'll be back on the drawing board. we start preparing them early this time round so that next year uh, we hope they can do better and in any case, uh, discussions are underway to make sure that uh, this particular competition is carried to the next level. If we succeed in our negotiations and government involvement, uh, next year we would have to put the prize money to one million uh, shillings. And that will be very, very competitive. Rather, one million, um, rather one million, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Euros, you think? Euros, <laughs> yeah. So if we go to the next level, out of the European Challenge Tour, we'll now go to the main tour. And uh, the main tour will call for something like 2 million euros. And that will be bringing even more pressure and more demands on the professionals to do well, to really up their game. Have you seen any improvement for what was there last year in 2017? No, there, there was no improvement as such. Uh, if anything, last year we had, uh, I think, three uh, professionals making the cut. This year we only had two. So we dropped by one position. And um, I think that when we discuss with this with the professionals themselves, we'll try to get to the root cause of why they are not performing well and perhaps give them a bit of more training. Uh, game, as you know, is more of a mental game. At some point, if you really are not composed, uh, you cannot uh, play very well. Yeah. And the fact that the prize money had uh, gone to 10 million shillings for the number one position, 
that in itself can cause a lot of excitement and anxiety among the golfers, and that could possibly explain why they didn't uh, play as well as we expected. Uh, the president said about uh, having academies in schools. What can you say about that in uh, maybe in improving golf in the country? Uh, thank you very much. That is really at the core of my concern as the KG chairman. Uh, we are appealing to all the um, county governments. And the president has also already put in his word when he announced that uh, he will have the Ministry of Education incorporate golf as a sport in all the schools. So we would like all the schools to engage in the sport of golf. And at the same time, the Kenya Golf Union has established a new vehicle, a company which we are going to call County Golf Parks Limited, whose mandate will be to establish 47 new county uh, golf courses in all the 47 counties so that every Kenyan in this uh, country should have an opportunity to play uh, golf. And if we succeed, we believe that in another 15 to 20 years, uh, we should be having more than enough professionals coming from every corner of the country. And this would put Kenya in a strong position to compete even at the Olympics and uh, have a hope of um, uh, winning some golf. For, for young, uh, a young upcoming golfer, uh, sometimes accessing these facilities uh, is difficult for them. Uh, is there anything maybe you're planning to, to improve that? Uh, precisely, that's why we are uh, heading out of Nairobi, Mombasa and Kisumu, uh, so that we go into the smaller urban areas and also deep into the rural areas. Um, as one uh, European uh, gentleman, Mr. Churchill, said many years ago, he thought that the uh, game of golf was a sport which was uh, not very clear and people were using very ill-designed equipment for the purpose and so on and so forth. So going forward, I'm even challenging our own Kenyan uh, technical guys if they can come up with a new set of clubs, maybe made of our own hardwood from this uh, country, so that even a child in the village who cannot afford the kind of uh, modern uh, clubs to play the sport, he can start hitting it with a piece of wood. And that way, by the time they get to upper primary and by the time they get into the secondary they will have acquired the skill and the talent and uh, surely we have the junior golf foundation which will take them on from there and prepare them for the real um, top end uh, golfing competitions so we have very 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 high hopes through the junior golf foundation and that is the arm of the kenya golf union that really prepares the youngsters between age five and age 18 and once you are over 18 we also have the golf talent foundation uh, which really takes care of uh, uh, those young adults and prepare them for golf. Uh, last year in 2017, you were in charge of that team which went uh, to Tanzania and uh, you did well, uh, top of the table. Uh, is there a need to have such tournaments so that uh, we prepare for bigger tournaments like uh, Kenya Golf Open? Absolutely. That is very necessary. In fact, uh, on the KGU calendar, we have uh, 19 um, competitions in a year which are uh, uh, at various clubs. And that's where we prepare the amateurs. And out of those amateurs, we are able to take them to compete in regional, uh, uh, regional competitions. And I'm happy that we were able to win the Victoria Cup in Entebbe. And we went, we went on to win the East African Challenge in Dar es Salaam. Uh, so that uh, we are actually at the top of the game as far as the amateur status is concerned. Our only threat is coming from our friendly uh, brothers across the border in uh, Uganda. Uh, who are really chasing uh, us for the position number one. But we are making sure that uh, we keep a safe distance from them. Although recently, we you know, we sent our team to uh, junior uh, golfers in uh, Morocco uh, last month. Uh, these young men, we may have seen them on the TV. They had a chance to visit State House, and they were given the flag by the president. So when they went to Morocco, um, they came in position number uh, four, and they were beaten by, by Uganda. Uh, Uganda beat us by just one stroke. So we are still on track, and we think we are going to keep fighting to retain our position as the leaders in the East African region, which now comprises of countries including uh, uh, Ethiopia, uh, Rwanda, Burundi, Uganda, Tanzania, uh, Mauritius, uh, Reunion, and Madagascar. And I'm told Southern Sudan is uh, coming on board. So we, we, the future is bright. Let's talk about uh, sponsors if we talk about the future because they are fundamental. Uh, we have challenges in football, in uh, rugby. What about golf? Uh, are there any sponsors coming in? Golf, I think we have been uh, fortunate because over the last 50 years, the Kenya Open, for example, has survived entirely on sponsorship from big corporate uh, companies 
Currently, like this year, we have the Barclays uh, Bank. Uh, we have uh, Kenya Breweries or the East African Breweries Limited. We have Coca-Cola. Uh, we have Safaricom. We have the National Media Group. I think the Standard Group will be on board next time. So, but we have a lot of goodwill from the um, local uh, companies, which really value golf as a, a sport that brings together uh, most of their clients. And it's a good sport for all of us. So we still hope that the uh, sponsors will stand by us. And we are fortunate that this particular time for the 50th um, uh, tournament, the government of Kenya has come in full force and put in a million, a hundred million shillings. Yeah. 50 million from the Ministry of Tourism and 50 million from the Ministry of Sports. And this really has boosted our uh, capability to make sure we arrange bigger and better uh, golf competitions, which are, which are attracting international, uh, top international players. Yeah. Uh, finally, from me, in a few seconds, we've seen the ministry and also the president getting involved uh, in golf. Uh, you say that the future looks bright. What are your plans as uh, Kenya Golf Union? Uh, our plans are really to remain on course. Uh, the immediate plan is to concentrate on this new project of uh, creating 47 uh, new uh, golf courses. We are going to call them uh, golf parks because we want to model them um, very much in the same uh, way that we have the golf park in Nairobi, where you don't have to pay hundreds of thousands of shillings to become a member. If you want to play golf in Nairobi and you go to golf park, you are able to pay only 10,000 shillings in a year, and every time you play, you pay 1,000 shillings, your green fees and so on, and you are able to enjoy a round of golf. So that um, uh, for those of us who like using the word mystify, uh, we want to make sure that people can accept that uh, golf is expensive, but we are now going to make it uh, cheap so that everybody can access it. And uh, I would really call upon our governors in all the 47 counties to really come forward and work with us. And we'll also be inviting uh, other parties who want to go in uh, uh, the what we call the PPP, yeah, Public Private uh, Sector Partnership to come up with these new golf courses and with other facilities like um, uh, hotels or, or villas which can attract uh, tourism. Not only foreign uh, tourists coming in, even on the local scene, we have a lot of movement between uh, one county and another. If people can have accommodation at those particular locations, they come enjoy their round of golf and they have somewhere to sleep. Uh, if we want to send out our junior uh, golfers, um, we have a small bus now here which was uh, contributed to us by the R&A. Uh, we are able to transport up to 30 children and we can move them from one county to another to meet their friends out of there and have competitive golf. So we think that that will be the real way of getting out of uh, uh, the, the kind of quagmire that we find ourselves in now. Uh, failing to make the cut, that was not a good thing, but uh, we have to live with it. Thank you very much, uh, Buona Richard. You've talked a lot, and uh, I know the Kenyans uh, are optimistic about golf in the country. You said about uh, the 47 golf course, uh, courses in, in Kenya. That will be a huge boost uh, to development of golf in the country. Well, Moses, you had it all from the man himself, the uh, man who is in charge of golf in Kenya right now, talking about uh, the future of golf in the country. Uh, maybe in 2019, it will be the 51st uh, uh, tournament of the Kenya golf. Maybe we'll see a Kenya in the top 10 to start with. And uh, But from here, uh, Soderberg, uh, Soderberg, Sebastian from Sweden, is still leading with with uh, 11 uh, under par right now uh, as we are remaining with about two holes to go. We'll keep you in touch uh, later to see who is going to bag uh, the title. Moses, back to you in studio. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Abula Ahmed. Uh, there, I know a lot is expected actually from uh, uh, this uh, uh, team uh, that is uh, uh, going on. I know when Abula Ahmed was uh, having that conversation, that uh, standing has uh, changed because I can see uh, Fanbring Janis is uh, leading with uh, 10 under par. He's uh, the first actually uh, on uh, that uh, 